Hi, uh, welcome to my talk um, about USB support in uh, Zephyr Atos. Um, my name is Johan Fischer. I'm ND engineer for Nordic Semiconductor and contributing to Zephyr since uh, 2016. <laughs> and um, I'm to maintain a USB uh, uh, subsystem. Yeah, I will give a short introduction about uh, current USB support and um, slight two differences to new uh, USB support and uh, uh, give you a short update about the current state of uh, USB development in Zephyr. Uh, yeah. That's, um, I found that uh, on, on uh, Zephyr uh, documentation page at the beginning somewhere that uh, the sentence that Zephyr offers a large and ever-growing number of features like uh, Bluetooth network stack, thread, mod bus, uh, USB and so on. And some of this feature depends on other features, like uh, open thread depends on network stack, and some parts of Bluetooth, uh, for example, if you use uh, uh, host control interface, a sample depends if you connect us over UART, depends on driver subs, your driver subsystem, and if you use that um, uh, in with USB, it's yeah, obviously it depends on USB. And um, the thing is that USB support uh, in Zephyr was not uh, written from scratch for the FIR subsystem. Uh, it was the core was imported, and uh, it was over time shaped in parts by the project needs. Yeah, <laughs> and some of these uh, things as a part of USB depends uh, as on other features like uh, CDCSM, the user interface for CDCSM. Uh, it's uh, UART driver API, so that depends uh, on, on, on UART, yeah. And um, we, uh, two, about two years ago, we decided to, to start with new design, uh, with a new USB device stack, because we are not that happy with that we have in the tree with uh, many issues. and. Yeah, it grows over time, and uh, currently we started. Actually, we started with USB device stack reward, but uh, now I call it rework of, rework of USB support. Yeah, because that also will include the uh, host support and few other things. Yeah, but uh, take a, let us take a look how how it is nowadays. How to enable USB device support in Zephyr Atos? Yeah. That it's uh, very simple. You just uh, have to call USB enable, uh, and then it works out of the box, probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you can pass a parameter. Yeah, you can see in the sample it's null, but uh, you can pass a callback, and uh, that will notify you about uh, states changes in USB stick. Yeah, like if device. Uh, get configured, you will notified about that. There's your, some drawbacks about that because uh, depending on the driver, it really depends on the driver. It will be executed in ISI context. Yeah, you need to be careful about that, and that will stay with us with I think next few months. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, and but that that's only one part. Yeah, how to enable USB <laughs> in Sapphire. There's another part: how to configure USB uh, device support in Sapphire. You, uh, that's it's uh, actually, uh, you, you have to do that to build time. Yeah? You need to enable in car config options to enable device stack to uh, configure your vendor ID and product ID. You don't, you shouldn't use the ZFIS default vendor ID in your products. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Um, you have to configure manufacturers, uh, manufacturer string, uh, device product string, uh, certain number. We'll usually uh, generate it using hardware ID in Zephyr at runtime, so it's just a placeholder. And you also have to configure if the device is cell powered or not, maximum power. And finally, to enable a class of function you would like to use, like in this example, that's loopback that just offers a few endpoints to for testing. Yeah, it's nothing special. But uh, you can see a few issues with that. That's it's. You can change these uh, options at runtime, yeah. 
we could add an API for that, but we decided to start with completely work. <laughs> but uh, and uh, that I think it's it's uh, we will have we would have just one instance of USB device. Yeah, usually it's enough. Yeah, you, it's not that. Uh, Often does you would have multiple devices on your board, yeah, USB devices, yeah. But uh, there are user cases for that too, yeah. Um, and take as a look under the hood. What happens if we here enable USB uh, device loopback? Yeah, there are a lot of not a lot, but there are a few macros in the class code that will place. Um, kind of redundant structures in, in the RAM that will be used by device tech, uh, like uh, uh, USB configuration data. And uh, inside this structure, there is also endpoint configuration data. What uh, part of that is redundant, uh, redundant because it, this data is already available in, in uh, function descriptor. Yeah? So we have this in information twice. Yeah? And we also have at the runtime if something changes in the stack, like uh, alternative is selected, we have to update <laughs> anything on to look at uh, different structures. Uh, that uh, is kind of a mess. Yeah. Um, so in the new stack, that will be a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do the same. Yeah. What we did with uh, with the current support with the new stack. Yeah. That actually, that is what you see here is not really settled. Yeah, it can change, but it will like that. Will be like that. Yeah, because uh, we we have this uh, in the GitHub, in GitHub. You can find uh, these requirements or issues as as feedback from users what they would like to see how the stack works, and that's the product of that. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, you can see there's a macro to define. So the new stack supports multiple configuration. Yeah, the current one it's fixed. It's fixed to support just one configuration. Yeah. So here you can define multiple configurations. And uh, using this helper macro, you can also just uh, also select the flex like self powered or if that uh, configuration supports remote wake up and maximal power. Then it's so it's mandatory. Let's to uh, define one configuration. Yeah, um, the descriptors are like uh, language descriptors are optional. Yeah, but it's nice to have them. Yeah, so they are helper macros to um, define uh, language descriptor and uh, finally string descriptors for for manufactured products and uh, certain number. Here again, here again uh, the setting number, if, if the platform supports hardware information, the setting number will be overwritten at runtime. Yeah? So it will be used the one from, from the board. Yeah? And uh, finally, we uh, have to define a device context. That's the USB uh, device defined macro. Um, it will, this, th this will create a structure that the stack will use as context. Yeah, you, you, it's, you need at least one. Yeah, <laughs> but you can have multiple, uh, multiple uh, uh, device instances. But if if that assigned to a controller like here for default, as if I UDC controller zero, you don't, you can't. You can enable only one instance. Yeah, you can shut down that and uh, enable another one. Yeah, that is possible. So you can have two instances uh, um, with device uh, context and descriptor that uh, have different uh, product or vendor IDs and different strings. Yeah, but you can also update the strings at runtime. You don't have to do that, but yeah, there. Everything is possible <laughs> with this thing. Yeah, you have to the choice. And on the configuration side, uh, side there is not that much to configure. Yeah, in car config options, you just uh, need to enable device tag next in that case, and to enable USB again. Yeah, 
But before that, as we do that to configuration time, uh, to to runtime, yeah, we need to register descriptors and configuration, and uh, finally enable USB. So the first step is to um, add a descriptor to USB context. Manufacturer, product, and serial number, and finally to add a configuration. It's like a, a device descriptor is built. First, you have device descriptor, then configuration descriptor, and so on. Yeah. After that, you 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 can init, initialize and enable USB support and uh, attach the device to a host. And our device uh, will probably work. Yeah. But uh, the host, if you use this on Linux kernel, for example, will complain that there is no uh, interface, yeah, because we didn't add any interfaces to our context. Uh, one thing uh, also important here that we have this, it, it might look unnecessary to call USB init and then USB enable. But the reason for that is like uh, after USB Call USB D init, the controller is initialized, but it's not recognizable by the host. The reason is to, for example, if you have a um, uh, battery charging uh, controller, yeah, to give the controller time to uh, initialize or to detect uh, uh, if it's connected to a host or a charging device. Yeah. So, so it means after init, you can get notification from the controller that its VBus is present or not. Yeah? And finally, if you call USB enable, the host will see your device and start to enumerate. Yeah? And they recommended out USB-D register class. That um, um, in the previous uh, for example for, for the current stack, I uh, used loopback, but here, here we can uh, Define or write our own uh, class or function in few slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So finally, after that, uh, after this uh, presentation, this presentation, you can write own uh, USB class or function uh, for new USB device support. So what we need uh, at the first place is the interface descriptor. And I, that's just uh, uh, sh short few lines of this. I, I, I don't have enough uh, place, so I, you can see just uh, the definitions for interface zero. Uh, and can see that it's an uh, alternative interface. Uh, it also contains two endpoints. Yeah? And interface zero, be num endpoints would be zero. Yeah? That this configuration is uh, if you if you if you design a uh, USB device, this kind of configuration is uh, very useful because it's uh, it's clearly describes uh, uh, an in which con in which configuration the device or your class is ready to transmit and receive the data. And here, it, if the host selects the alternative settings one that can be used for in the class to start or to prepare for, uh, for, for the transfer. Yeah. Uh, the class API um, looks like, if you're familiar with Sapphire and uh, with device, uh, device API or device driver, that looks very familiar, 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 but it's much simpler. And I couldn't use the device API here because it was too heavy and also Device API is missing a uh, node for uh, syslist uh, implementation, so I, yeah, I wouldn't need another structure anyway. So, uh, but uh, USB device class API is, is very simple. Yeah. Um, there are only two, three uh, interfaces mandatory, like uh, request one. Any request to the endpoint will end in this function. There is update which notifies if uh, a new interface is selected as also the end of if the host calls set interface. Finally, this function will be called to notify the class that an, another interface was selected and in its initialization fun function. 
Um, yeah. And finally, you have to use USB device defined class macro to uh, place uh, uh, your structure in, in the interable section. So finally, we can, um, you can, you have access to, to your class from everywhere in, in, in Zephyr yeah, at runtime. And that also there is an example in the shell how, how to um, access that uh, using, uh, in, in that case, it would be a string foo. Yeah. And short example how to submit the transfer. As I explained uh, before, you can select new interface and will be notified uh, over the interface update. And uh, here we can start, uh, we should, uh, for the completeness, yeah, one actually uh, has to uh, check what alternative is selected <laughs> yeah. and start uh, the transfer only if the alternative uh, one is selected. Yeah. But here it's uh, just as example, you can start and transfer um, uh, after the notification. And uh, on, on the right, you can see uh, you, uh, Python code uh, for this class, how to uh, read from the, or to write to endpoint uh, uh, one in that case. And in the console, you will finally see um, the hex dump uh, of the data. Yeah. You can go step by step, actually, and uh, you should be able to write open uh, uh, function or class for new USB device stack. And finally, overview what APIs we, what new APIs we would have in, uh, in USB device stack. It's, uh, uh, again, starting from the top, it's device tech API that uh, if, if you are a user of the USB device tech or of USB device class, that's the API we will probably use. Or if you would like to change uh, vendor ID or product ID at runtime, that is the API to use. And th that will be defined in uh, includes a fire USB, USB D uh, header. Uh, if if you are a designer of a uh, USB class or function, then you have to look at USB D class API. That's also defined in the same header, but uh, use uh, another uh, namespace. And on the law, if you are driver designer or you would like to port the driver from current uh, USB device su uh, support or driver API to new one, that is the UDC driver API. It's also the namespace for that is UDC, and uh, you can find that in includes the fire drivers USB UDC H header. Um, you can see that the driver between the driver and uh, the USB device stack, there's a thin common layer, and uh, that that also takes care. Uh, what is common in all the drivers. Yeah, you can also see in current stack like, things like to check if the endpoint is enabled or not in some uh, use cases, or that the device, the driver self, or the controller is enabled or initialized and so on. Uh, also, locking is done in this common layer. You don't have to uh, repeat all this code in your own driver. Yeah. There we have, we'll go over to the UDC drivers. We have support for multiple drivers. Yeah, like we have support for multiple device instances. There is support for multiple drivers on driver instances if that's supported by your platform. Uh, like uh, it would be not the case, for example, on Nordic uh, NLF USBD because there is always one instance of the driver. But you can attach, for example, if you would have support for external <laughs> device, you can attach a USB and uh, would have uh, two. Uh, uh, drivers or uh, devices. Um, there's a single asynchronous API for in to enqueue transfers in in the driver. Um, it, as if you compare that with the current uh, s s uh, driver, uh, there is no direct write y access to endpoint buffer. Yeah, you there's oh, for each endpoint there is a queue. That will take the request, and after the request is uh, finished, there is the single API to uh, 
put it to a upper layer. So they, um, we use net buffers for endpoint transfers. That's some, there are few drawbacks, but <laughs> we will discuss that later and hopefully uh, fix that. Uh, I already described the common layer. And we have the implementations for NIF, USB D, controller or Nordic devices, Kinetius USB, FS, OTG, and devices like FreedomBot 64, Key, FreedomBot Key 25, and 22, and so on. And the new one is virtual controller. And if you are interested uh, to port a new driver to new API or a new uh, to add a, to port an existing or add new UDC driver, um, then please use one of the existing drivers as reference. But after you finish that, and please rewrite every single line. <laughs> Uh, just to make sure that you don't repeat the errors, the errors in the code I, for example, made or someone else. Yeah. Uh, uh, use the shell sample as application on device. This uh, you samples uh, subsets USB shell sample. Uh, if you flash that to device, it will not immediately enumerate the device. Yeah. You have to enable to init. You need to do the, the steps in the sample one by one. Like um, you, you have to uh, init the device, enable the device, and uh, after that was enumerated, you can start. There is a command to start vendor specific uh, control request uh, to verify uh, that uh, control transfers uh, works without issues, and uh, to verify bulk. Usually, if you get to two things working, then you are fine, yeah. Uh, also, uh, one thing uh, is to uh, verify endpoint uh, halt. Either for control is using features or, no, for the, either using, uh, on the host side using features, the feature halt and the endpoint, uh, or from the shell, yeah. Um, the new, uh, as of working on, is USB uh, host controller uh, API. It's uh, very similar to uh, device control API, but uh, it uses net, not, not uses net buffer buffs directly, but in containers. Yeah, there's uh, always, depending on the art of transfers, there are at least one or more uh, net buffs uh, in this container. And for example, for control transfers, uh, it contains three of them, like one, each one for uh, two or three, depending on, on the control transfer, like for setup, uh, control, and status states, uh, stage of, uh, of the transfer, of the control transfer. Um, there is also a team common layer between driver and host stack uh, as helper. And, uh, Currently, we have uh, in the branch implementations for the Max uh, 3421E uh, controller, you can connect over SPI to any devices, actually, <laughs> and uh, for a virtual controller. And as host support is <laughs> in, in, in at the beginning, it's a very simple initial uh, code. Um, originally driven by a needs for testing, uh, for test uh, device support, and is uh, that is very similar in structure to new USB device support. Yeah. Uh, the stack development, I hope, I hope it will accelerate in next releases. But we are very busy with device part, and um, finally it should ideally map the device support. Yeah, like. For if we have CDC SAM code on device side, ideally we would have CDC SAM code on the host side to build uh, as for the testing. Yeah. And uh, new and hot, <laughs> for especially for the testing, <laughs> is the virtual bus and virtual controllers. Yeah, that was actually motivated by uh, by the top level testing on the hardware. So internally at Nordic, we have this setup with Max device uh, that can attach to uh, our boards. And uh, 
do some testing uh, related to chap usually chapter nine, like device framework, to um, to verify uh, the stack and but as other function like uh, suspend and uh, resume the device, uh, test uh, remote wake up, uh, and so on. Yeah, but uh, testing on on the hardware is slow and expensive. Yeah, because yeah, slow is always expensive because <laughs> it takes time. Yeah, and uh, uh, the other motivation was to implement better USB IP uh, server support. We actually have one in the tree for it's called USB DC native Pro 6, but it's not uh, correct. Uh, name because it doesn't really depend on POSIX. Yeah, it uses USB IP and exposed the function. On that. I started uh, to rework that a few times, but finally closed the pull request and decided to dispatch because uh, with that code we can export the real USB host controller over Ethernet, for example, but as a virtual uh, a part and use that uh, on POSIX for development, for example. Yeah. Both of that neither so as a neither virtual bus nor controllers emulates a real bus or hardware. It's not an emulator. Yeah, it's uh, it's much simpler. <laughs> it connects the, it connects the host as a USB host and uh, and device below the common layer of UDC and UDC driver API that I show in previous slides. Yeah, and uh, and there there are overlays in in the shell sample. Uh, and that actually describes describes how that uh, works on on higher level. This part was not approved by device trip ministry, yeah. So it's <laughs> 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 so that that's yeah yeah that's may change yeah because before it uh, gets in. But uh, yeah, you can see here the devices are child nodes of the controller, and uh, that allows me. Uh, using the, uh, to obtain the name of uh, of the host node using device tree, yeah. and that that is very simple. I don't need anything uh, special for that. Just device tree and uh, virtual bus support. Bus support is actually this virtual bus support is is uh, in yeah closer to real bus as USB bus is. Yeah, <laughs> because in, in in this virtual bus uh, from the host controller, you can advertise uh, uh, the events to all devices connected to this controller. So it works like a bus, like a D bus, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the responses are uh, directed uh, to the host only. Yeah, uh, and. That uh, has some issues because on USB you can have, you don't have really a bus there to connect to devices. To, for example, like here, if after the reset, both of these devices uh, are in default state with address zero, you don't have that situation on uh, on the real USB because there is hub in between. And uh, here we just need to care uh, that uh, only. One device is initialized, and after that it's enumerated, we can initialize another one and start with testing like that. So it's a kind of a work around, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, usage examples for uh, virtual bus and virtual controller is, well, like I said, device framework test. That's the, I think, the big one. Uh, to uh, test all the requests and, uh, like example here, that interface request request uh, it's uh, it's not specified in default state, and anything but is not specified, we will treat that as error. Yeah? That's uh, actually the state in in device state. That's anything is not specified is an error, and uh, if device is the address state, then the device uh, stack must respond with error, and if that is in configured state. The device may <laughs> may that, that the request may be valid or not. Yeah, depending on the interfaces. Yeah, for example, if we uh, look back at uh, at the code where we have uh, two interfaces, one is the alternative, then uh, the request to I don't know request five is 
not valid. Yeah. On this use, uh, this cases we can test it with uh, virtual support. Yeah, very quickly and daily or on any pull request, whatever. Yeah. And the other user cases is uh, class implementation testing on both sides. So if we, uh, for example, CDCSM on device side and CDCSM on host side, we can test it also daily and very quickly. And uh, finally, development set up for native POSIX platform. Yeah, that is from my side. Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, just to clarify, the virtual uh, controller, the, the virtual driver, it's a single instance of Zephyr, right? Where you, where the host support and the device support yes. to each yes. other via RAM directly. So, yes. Yeah. So it doesn't work with, say, if, if you were, we were mentioning native POSIX as one example, then you would build one Zephyr dot uh, exe, yeah. and that Zephyr dot exe would contain both host support and device support, and yeah. the same instance will talk to each other. It's not like <coughs> the USB IP where you build the, the device support and then it talks to the US to the uh, Linux USB stack via IP. That's another story, right? Yeah. So okay, and uh, so in the case of you, when you use that setup, you have to enable host and device support always. In yeah, system, it's correct? yeah. Okay. Test right. example so test okay. test uh, in the sample is overlay for Cortex M3. Uh, and if you if yeah, one yeah. build that for yeah for chemo yeah. for chemo Cortex M3 if you build a sample for Cortex chemo M3 that will enable uh, device uh, support and host support and use the same overlay yeah, yeah. 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 and okay. finally in um, oh first time I can it doesn't yeah it's <laughs> broken it's always yeah it, it's <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, that's. I I hope I can. Uh, no. We have time. <laughs> so another question. Um, so you initially mentioned something about having multiple configurations, and you can shut down one of them and switch to the other one. Yes. Okay. So, so you now. That, that's not doable in the existing interface, right? In the, the existing, existing stack. In the existing de the USB device stack. It has only one. It's always hard coded exactly. to yeah. one configuration, and you can change that. Yeah, it's statically built and this. So yeah. you could actually at runtime switch on a, from a working USB device to into DFU mode. Yeah, that's special use case, but yeah. Uh, actually, we can shut down. We can have multiple. There, there are too many configurations uh, possibilities. Yeah, you can, uh, you can have multiple instances of a of, of a class uh, like CDCM mm -hmm. zero, CDM C, CDCM one, and assign CDC CM zero to a configuration, to first configuration CDC CM, to a second configuration, and also Ethernet support as a two second configuration have. These two configuration assigned to a device instance, uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, you can also shut down and change that again. Yeah, you right. can unregister the class from a configuration mm -hmm. and uh, register it to another one. Like that, <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah, it it uses RAM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like current uh, uh, stack. Anything is placed in the RAM. Yeah, so we waste a lot of RAM. <laughs> not that much, but yeah. Um, it uh, also is here the case yeah, in with new USB device support. Uh, but uh, I think we can improve uh, um, how we handle the strings yeah, because it's it's always uh, fixed at runtime. But we can also put uh, the strings in, in with write encoding in the flash and. Uh, but the descriptors and the uh, interface and so on, the, the, that's all still in RAM, like in the first stack. Yeah. Mainly because you have to override certain. Yeah, yeah. Certain yeah, things and, things. Uh, yeah. And we, for, for like, for example, in device context, it's the device key descriptor and as a pointer to the device itself. So you can, ch actually, you can 
change the device and to use the context. <laughs> and so the thing that started with the issue that we can, we can, uh, uh, the runtime or to build time to, to list or to obtain what uh, compatible devices we uh, have in, in, in uh, or we support, so as the user has, has selected, yeah. And, but I think that's better approach to have this context in, in the user area on the user RAM. Yeah, it can be placed elsewhere and just need it. Both. <laughs> so, so if you have, uh, for example, you have uh, uh, an interface with two endpoints, one for bulk, one for uh, bulk endpoints, one for in, one for out, uh, it, uh, it would be uh, in hex 81 and 01, yeah, like for in and, for in and out, yeah. And um, you, you would have that in multiple classes and, and at the start, the, uh, during initialization or uh, class assignments yeah, uh, to the stack, uh, it will uh, fix that for you. Yeah. Like in the current approach, that's the same. It goes over all the interfaces and points and uh, reenumerates that or assigned new addresses based on uh, controller also on controller capabilities. Yeah. So if you have multiple instances of your uh, interface. Then the first one will start with 8101, the second one 8202, and so on. That will be remunerated. But there uh, are requests to have an option to disable that. So I will add that later. There are use cases for simple devices with just uh, one interface that doesn't have this composite configuration that on the host side people use uh, drivers with uh, hard-coded endpoint addresses, so they don't use uh, descriptors of the device to, to discover what endpoints are there, but use hard-coded endpoints, and uh, they are in some situations with some controllers, it, because they, we reassign the addresses, it wouldn't work yeah, anymore with the driver. When you, when you use those macros to describe, yeah, this one, yeah, exactly. So these macros are typically, uh, they're typically put in a header file or in the main C file. Where, where, what's the structure of using these macros? Uh, in the code, that's. Yeah, yeah, but where exactly in the code? Like uh, in, the sam in the new samples, where have you placed them? I, in the main, in I saw it, yeah. Do they have to be in order? Like, if you start for the first configuration, then comes... No, 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 okay. no. Right. So how do, you re how do you refer to a particular configuration when you are adding the scripters? How do you know that I'm adding uh, to full config? What line? No. So if, you, if I define, let's say, two... Uh, two yeah, the USBD configuration defined, full config. That's my first configuration. Assume let's, I have two configurations. How do I tell that the particular interface... The first one yeah. you add using USB D add configuration will be first index and the second, second, and so on. I had a, con I ha I had a version where you, a user could assign the number, mm -hmm. but that doesn't work good because you, if you start with, uh, not with zero example, yeah, mm -hmm. then it would not work. The host will not emulate at least Linux host say no. <laughs> the first one has right, to right. be <laughs> that and cannot be, for example, two or three. Mm -hmm. uh, no way. Right. So that was not, um, in my opinion, not that good. So I changed that. Uh, okay, but here, the, oh, okay, so you have to actually hook that configuration to the USB yeah. configuration. Yeah. Right. I see, I see. All right. To the first configuration. Yeah, you have to care, uh, to take care what uh, config to what configuration you add. Uh, adds. But what, what, then I guess, why why partially macros and partially functions? Why not do that that part that you have in macros? Why not do it in functions as well? If you're gonna do it anyway, so wh why have the API split between macros and functions? Why not have just like 
a, a, an API call string define and call it, you know, uh, and then. Uh, in the macro test. Yeah, but test not only the string descriptor structure. If you use the USPD, USPD descriptor string define, it's not just uh, device, n not only the device the string descriptor structure, it's also uh, there's a management structure with the sys uh, sys node. Yeah, it's instance. It's more more uh, not just one structure, but few of them. And they are used, there's a, like, uh, we can have additional descriptors on yeah. depending on the index. Uh, the, uh, so you, you have to provide the index. And uh, in the request processing, that will look for this index. And if they wouldn't find that, it will uh, halt the endpoint, also right, reply, right. reply with error. But every, but every single thing, every single structure that's declared by those macros stays in RAM. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that answers my question. Thank yeah. you. Hi there. On the Howard project, we're um, trying to bridge between Kubernetes and RabbitMQ and reusing the mesh. So we've designed an app that will use USB uh, to mesh kind of modems, if you like. It's a bit hacky, um, but it works. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But that's handled by the stack. You will not see that that's in, in behind this. That is. It. But after that is it, yeah. The the for example, the device controller would notify the upper layer there is the reset, yeah. The upper layer would NQ try to NQ all endpoint buffers, <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, bring the stack in kind of initial position. Oh, okay, so the yeah. hub reset is triggered in a way like, like it's a yeah, but yeah, what is what is missing here? You can see there is no callback for notifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in USB enable. We that's in intentional <laughs> because we have uh, two approaches in Zephyr. There are two different projects to add uh, kind of tbus they are kind of like tbus support in Zephyr. one is the cbus pull request and uh, the other one is uh, event manager from nordic and um, device tech will use one of these approaches 294 yeah 294 the user there will be a channel to subscribe to USB notifications, yeah, to uh, general notification from the stack from specific context to get notified if the host uh, raises it uh, or v like VBus is, is connected or VBus is present, yeah, for you charging device. Uh, device is uh, configured, yeah, if you need to change uh, uh, the operation mode of your device, yeah. and uh, we can we can also have class specific uh, notifications like we have this uh, it's actually work around for cdcm on some arduino devices to put it in uh, bootloader mode if the baud rate is changed yeah that's very i don't like that really and that's very hacky because it's uh, it's called from uh, class context and uh, having this kind of uh, event manager or zbus we would be able to uh, also to submit uh, notification from the classes, like for the CDCM, some parameter changed, you can subscribe to this channel and we'll be notified. Yeah, that would be great yeah. for 
yeah, that's I, I forget to mention that, but that's one of them. Yeah, when you have multiple configurations like audio and then like the mass storage and then like in the audio process I need to take a call and yeah. the side yeah. Then thank you for your attention.